Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are uh, in this part of the world in, whether in India or abroad. And as you know this is the DADM which is as you can see on the slide which is data analysis and decision making two course under the NPTEL MOOC series. And this DADM 2 as DADM 1 was is basically for 12 weeks which is 30 hours, 30 hours being basically. Uh, split into 60 lectures each for uh, half an hour and each week we have 5 lectures and after each week we have assignments and as you can see from the slide we are in the 8th week which is the 37th lecture which is the second lecture for the 8th week. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur in India. Now, if you remember we are discussing about the multi criteria decision making by core and we have already discussed for one lec whole set of one week about electra one set uh, of one week for uh, topsis and then initially we have discussed about ahp also now in by core uh, the similarity and similarity about topsis and by core had been discussed one was basically linear normalization one was vector normalization we also discussed the concept that in um, Vicor we will consider the distance measures cons considering the, uh, the concept that what distance measure do you use. We will use the LP norm and I will show you if, if you remember I did mention in the last lecture which was in 36th lecture that how the distance measure could be understood. And in the Vicor method again I will go in the similar way uh, state the algorithm. Um, st uh, take a very simple example and then solve it accordingly and I will mention the steps as we proceed. They would not be much of a dissimilarity apart from that that how you calculate the so called best solution, worst solution which in many of the cases you mentioned as concordance, discordance set or the distance to the PIS or distance to NIS. So, there are different ways how you, you analyze um, uh, the, the things. So, we will assume this slide is basically the essence um, the one and I did mention about that uh, about how you will cons can, can consider the distance measure. So, as usual consider the nomenclature you have m number of um, uh, total uh, alternatives or goals to achieve and for each goal you consider different criteria or attributes characteristics and there are n in number. So, the suffix i changes from 1 to m as in Mangalore or mango and n change uh, j changes from 1 to n as in nose or Nagpur. Now, remember one thing that uh, in, in many of the methods or almost I should say in all of the methods of MCDM uh, whether HP, Topsys, Electra and specifically in Vicor I did mention that will consider the attributes of the characteristics as the 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 main um, uh, what I should say the quality based on which you will try to analyze each and every alternative against each other co corresponding to the fact that the criteria are there. And, and in Vicor method it is e simple to analyze that even if the units for the attributes are different we will be able to form or, or bring some semblance of uh, comparison between the criteria even as the, um, uh, the units are different. So, we will consider which I have already said we will consider m number of alternatives and n number of criteria, and we will consider the distance function of the mapping or the functional form as C j a i where C implies the criteria. A implies the alternative. So, such that C j and A i would mean the overall characteristics of the criteria or the priority value which which accrues between the relationship coming out from the jth 
uh, criteria for the ith alternative. So, we will consider the gist distance function uh, based on uh, this the criteria was basically we will have a weight which I have already discussed. If I am repeat excuse me if I am repeating please bear with me. We will consider the weights w j, j is equal to 1 to n and we will have the corresponding values. So, what you are going to take if you look at the numerator and the denominator, in the denominator you have basically a difference between the max and the min as it is stated. So, C j a plus and this should be what should change it. So, there is no confusion a plus minus yes. So, we have this right. So, this is fine. So, C j a plus is basically you take either the row or the column. Now, remember we will be taking the matrix m cross n where m and n have their own notions which has been already been mentioned time and again from my side. Now, you will take the maximum corresponding to C g a i's and you will take the minimum corresponding C g a i's for all the values uh, of i's, i's means the first alternative, second alternative, third alternative, so on and so forth. That means, you are going uh, row wise. Now, the denominator is basically the difference. That means, you are normalizing or taking the ratios of the max and the min and based on that you are trying to find out where do they stand. So, you have a real line, the max and means are has been normalized as the distance which is C j a plus minus C j a minus and based on that you will basically put the values where does C j a i stand and you will basically find out for each and every j is equal to 1 till n. So, say for example, for j is equal to uh, 1, you will find out C j a i and then basically subtract that value from the maximum value. So, which is, so we will draw the real line first. Now, what I will take is, I will take the max mean, let me use the blue color. So, this is the max this is the mean. So, you will basically have the line as given. This is mean, this is max. So, this distance what we have is basically the one which is, let me use the highlighter. this is the one. So, that means, see I am normalizing and finding on a normalized scale maximum minimum. Now, forget about W j. So, if I consider this, so for each C g a i that particular row we have a maximum, we will try to find out the difference between them and then multiply by the corresponding weights. So, consider the weights are all equal. So, if the weights are all equal, we will basically multiply the distance which is occurring between the max and each and any individual value normalized by the difference between the max and the min and sum them up. But remembering that what type of norm which you are using, I will come to the norm within few minutes uh, and explain that what the concept of norm would mean in more details. Now, if it is L 1 norm, you will take the, the mod it is the, the L infinity now will take the mix um, max and corresponding to L 2 you will basically have the Cartesian distance and so on and so forth. So, once you have that you rank them and utilize this ranking system to further find out the scoring for the max and the mean and then then find out the overall ranking of the A i 1, A i 2, so on and so forth for i 1 and i 2 being element of the total set of alternatives. Remember L 1 and L infinity are, I am not talking about the 
ith one so that will um, basically be for i is equal to 1 2 3 4 till m for each and every um, alternatives which you have so l1 and l infinity are used to formulate the ranking measures where p can be 1 2 3 4 till infinity is basically an integer and denotes the distance measure used so what distance measures we will try to find out we will use that p is equal to 1 denotes as if we have already discussed that in the topsis method it denotes the manhattan norm while p is equal to infinity denotes the in the infinity norm which is the max one now we have done it still i'll repeat it for your own convenience so we'll basically have different norms l1 norm would be the manhattan distance norm between vectors and points where the vectors are x vector is x12 xn this n has nothing to do with the n number of criteria i have i am just taking it arbitrarily it could be anything so this is just a nomenclature concept i am using this i use that uh, in the in the case of when we are discussing about the topsis also so i didn't mention them there but i am again mentioning it here in order to make it clear so this n which is here i am not highlighting i am just putting my pointer here this n has nothing to do with the concept of um, the criteria. Similarly, y vector y bold will be y1 to yn and if I want to find out the L1 norm, it will basically be the mod of the difference and sum them up from i is equal to 1 to n. Again, this n is the number of elements which you have in x vector and y vector. The name relates to distance which I have already discussed as the taxi has to drive in the rectangular street, gr street grid in the city of New York man, in the area of Manhattan. While n infinity norm would give me again for x vector x1 to xn, y vector y1 to yn, it will give me the maximum values for each and these are which I have max of x i minus y i and L p norm would basically be between two vectors again x vector x 1 to x n y vector y 1 to y n be the difference between the mods to the power p th 1 and then basically sum them up and find out the 1 to the power p power of that. That means you are trying to scale them up and then bring down the scale depending on the, the p th power which you have. Now let us consider an example, I am considering in a very simple case as a three dimension one and you will understand why this distance measures would change as you change the norm. Consider the vector is 2 minus 5, 20 and y vector is minus 12, 15 and 0. So that means the x point is we go um, uh, travel plus 2 along the x axis x I am using as a vector. So, and then I travel minus 5 in the y axis, axis I am talking about and then I travel 20 plus in the z axis. So, that is the coordinate system point I have. Similarly, for the point y vector, I travel minus 12 along the x axis, then I travel plus 15 along the y axis and in the z axis, I do not travel because it is 0. So, if I want to find out the L1 norm, again as per the formula, I um, add up all the values, i is equal to 1 to n. So, let me, I think it would be easy for you to understand. So, rather than writing n, I should write it down so it is easy for all of us to understand. So, let us go a little bit slow. So, 3 value would come here. Let me change this also. Let me change this also. So, for i is equal to 1, 2, 3, you find out the difference, which is I will put the color scheme here so it is much easier for me to. So, this is the first one is 2 and minus 2, 12. So, this is 2 minus or minus 12 mod of that which is 14 which is here. Then I take minus 5 or minus 12. So, minus 5 and minus 12 is minus 5 
and plus sorry plus 15. So, minus 5 or minus 15 the value comes out to be 20. Similarly, I have 20 in the z direction 0 in the z direction for x and y vector the value is 20 minus 0 which is 20 and the total value of L 1 comes out to be 54. I will just circle it. I will use this value. So, in order to differentiate. So, I get a value of 20, 54. Then when I come to L 2 norm, again I have this 2 value minus 12. So, it is 2 minus or minus 12 whole square as I did as, as, as it should be because p is now 2. When I can come to the y axis, the color code I am using is green. So, it is minus 5 of minus 15 whole square, which is basically um, 20 square. So, this is 400. This value I have not highlighted, highlighted for our convenience, it is 14 square, which is 196. And finally, for movement in the z direction which is blue, blue color which is 20 and 0. So, it is 20 minus 0 whole square which comes out to 400. So, so square them up, add them up, find out the square root. It comes out to 996 square root and the actual value comes out to be 31.55. There is uh, let us consider as 31.6. So, when I mention I will be basically talking about 31.6 until unless uh, required. So, I will highlight it 31.5. Note down one thing 54 has now decreased to 31.5. Now, let me come to L infinity norm. Again, I use the same color scheme for x direction movement 2 and minus 12, 2 of minus or minus 12 that is 14. Then the second value is green in color which is minus 5 of minus and minus 15 which is 20 and the last value I am using the color blue which is 20 and 0 20 of min, minus 0 which comes out to be 20 and the actual value comes out to be 20. So, the values are given as 54, 31.5 obviously they would be L 3, L 4, L 5 so on and so forth till the last one which is 20. Now, in this graph, I have mentioned very simply that how does the LP norm value change as I change the values of p. So, on along the x axis, I have I, you, I have the values of p 1, 2, 3, 4 till 100, I have taken till 100 and along the y axis, I have taken the values of L p. So, for 1, it is 54 if you remember, for 2, it is basically 30.55 whatever, for 3, so on and so forth till it goes to L infinity, which was if you remember the value which you account for, found for L infinity, which was 20. It is almost coming out to be 20, slowly it will become 20. So, if you consider the values it goes like this slowly asymptotically it becomes 20. So, if you increase the, the dimension, so here we had three dimension in the x axis, y axis and z axis. Say for example, we consider x 1 axis, x 2 axis, x 3 axis, x 4 axis so on and so forth and then we find out these values which was n dimension. So, here n is 3 that is why it is 3 dimension. If you have n dimension, you can find out and the L 1, L 2, L 3 and sim similar NL infinity norm would have these characteristics where you can find an asymptotic curve based on the value of P changing which will have an effect on the L P norm value changing. This I just thought I will mention it to you for your understanding. So, as you change it, you will have a different ranking system and ranking system in the L infinity norm would almost be equal to each other because closer the values of P it is towards 1 higher the distances values if you notice it here. So, this I thought I should explain it to you such that you understand when you do the problem. Now, I will illustrate another graph which will make things much easier. So, 
consider the grid system as shown in this um, in this slide and uh, the grid system is in a cartesian coordinate two dimension so here we have uh, two points the first one and mark it as let me mark it as uh, some some color because already we have um, this color would be different so i have x vector point similarly y vector point whatever they are and it is a two dimension so it will be x1 y x2 for x vector and similarly you have basically y1 and y2 we are not considering z1 and so on and so forth in third dimension now look at these curves so this green one would basically make you simply understand that we are taking the l2 norm and similarly blue red and yellow would give you a concept that we are basically use the l1 norm different ways you take it l1 norm so i'll pause here have a look so that it makes life easy for us to understand so you have x vector which is a point and a cartesian coordinate y vector and also another point at the cartesian coordinate green line is the l2 norm between x and y red one blue one and yellow one are the different ways you can reach from x to y and these are the l1 norm so now it states the green line which is the l2 norm is the unique shortest distance while the red blue and yellow l1 norm are all same and the length of 12 so if you remember what we have seen in the l2 norm it was 54 in for that calculation which we did so it will be same in whichever direction in the three dimensional case you are going so in this case is the cartesian coordinate you are moving from x to y in different ways and in that other example where it was 54 it was basically would have been a cuboid with uh, some x and y values whatever it was stated and you can basically take different ways of reaching from x to y one can generalize this in the n dimension case which i mentioned so this is why the l2 norm has a unique solution while the l1 norm would not have the unique solution this would have an implication that when you are trying to utilize the l1 norm for the vicor method you may get different results but further on for l2 l3 l4 lp till infinity your answer would be unique point 1 and obviously the difference between the answers would start decreasing as you go for the l infinity norm this we will try to explain through the example so let us go through the vicor algorithm and the steps and solve it using the excel sheet for a problem we will solve it here as we did in the last example assume decision on alternatives as ai i is equal to 1 to m and we also assume the attributes on the decision criteria goals are given by cj j is equal to 1 to n so these a's are being affected by the weights of the criteria and the effects of the criteria which they accrue to the alternatives so this is basically when you find out the cj along with ai you had the functional form as cj ai based on that we proceeded we state the pseudo code for the working principle of the vicor method and how it works we will state it very simply as we did for the the um, topsis method now it looks complicated it's not you have to just assume the steps and we will basically utilize this accordingly so i would not go to immediately the definition define step which is step 1 i'll only go to in the input and then go back to the once i finish the overall algorithm on the flow process i'll go by, back to the defining state which is the first one so as usual you will have two sets of matrices one is the x1 which is of dimension m cross n which are the priority values which you have for each and every criteria and each and every alternative so as it is of dimension m cross n as it states so x is the m cross n matrix consisting of priority scores assigned to decision alternatives ai corresponding to the fact that the criteria goals are given by cj 
and the weights are given by Wj. I am going to come to the weights again even though I have repeated it, but it is just a, uh, a way of, of discussion such that the logical flow remains. Now, in this case again the value which you will have in the matrix X non-normalized one. So, say for example, I have X 3 4, it would mean that for the fourth criteria what is the weight or the priority is accrues to the third alternative. Similarly, X i j would basically be the jth criteria's priority weights or priority values accruing to the ith alternative. Now, these are for the different attributes, so they need to be normalized. For the normalization case, we have considered that if we, if we, we use for each and every decision maker the case that what would basically be the utility function, but here we are con considering the fact that the distance measure should, should be used. Now, again I will repeat few things which I have done that in the electro process and the topsis process. Remember one thing that if you consider the relative distance measures to be fixed, continue using that calculations for each and every uh, steps for the same decision maker point one. Point number two, it, yes, it may be true that the distance measures being utilized by decision maker one or decision maker two or three or four, considering there are five decision makers may change, but for simplicity we will keep the decision distance measures for each and every decision makers to be the same. So, if it is basically L 3, that means P is equal to 3, we will continue utilizing that for each and every decision maker. As I said, we will take the values of the weights, which I did not mention fleetingly. So, weights again are basically the priority which you are trying to put for each and every criteria amongst themselves. So, if you have a weight matrix of size n cross n, it means the principal diagonals are values corresponding to w1, w2 till wn and the of the diagonal elements are 0, which means that w1 is the overall weight which I can accrue when I compare the first or criteria with respect to the rest. Similarly, W 2 would be the weight which I can give to the second criteria with respect to the rest. Similarly, for the last one which will W n and again we will very simply consider the weights should be add up to 1 or they are basically being normalized on a scale to 1 or 100 whichever you want to do. Now, once you have this x and W you will basically try to find out that considering the values of, of x which you have, which have different type of attributes priorities, you need to normalize them. When you need to normalize them, again the question would come whether you need to basically normalize along the row or along the column. The question would again, I will I, I, I give the answer is that if you follow the principle of normalizing along the row, continue using that same concept. If you try to basically normalizing along the column, continue, continue continue to utilize the same concept. Now, when there are many decision makers, for simplicity we will consider that as utility functions are same, as distance measures are same, as the, the distance measures are being utilized by any decision maker for step by step are same, we will also consider the normalization concept also to be the same between different type of decision makers. So, once you basically have x, you normalize them along the row or along the column. And once you do that, you will basically are at the stage where you can basically start off the process of trying to find out the distance measures. Now, as required, we will consider that the actual matrix based on which we will try to proceed and compare the different type of distance would basically be the multiplication of the priority weights which are normalized multiplied by the, the weights, which means that we have been able to subsume or consider both the priority weights on a normalized scale plus the corresponding weights which accrue to each and every, every criteria. So, utilizing that F matrix. So, these are the generally uh, nomenclature I am trying to utilize. We will utilize this F matrix in order to compare the ranking system considering the LP norm. So, P would can be changed. So, as I showed you in the graph the asymptotic one as you change the values of P you will can have different type of rankings, but the ranking differences would basically start decreasing as P increases. With this, I will close this lecture, which is the second lecture in the 8 week and consider more about the, the Vicor method in the subsequent three lectures, which are there for this week. Have a nice day and thank you very much.